Right now you join me for sunrise here at Zakar in the Mojave Desert. This is an ADV training facility that Harley Davidson has invited us out to to ride the Pan America on some actual terrain. So over the next two days, I'm gonna get some actual ADV riding training, which is good because I'm not really an ADV rider. And then on day two of this video, we're gonna go on a big ride, so let's get into it. Here is the bike, of course, the Harley Davidson Pan America. And this is something that you guys have seen on the channel, not once, but at least three times because we've done a few videos on this bike. So in this video, I'm not really gonna get so deep into the technical details, but what you do need to know is that it's got 150 horsepower and tons of suspension. So this is going to be a really cool bike to ride out here in the desert. If you want more details on this motorcycle, check out a few of the other videos that are already up on the channel. So as you can see, they've got my mostly correctly spelled name on this bike and uh, no windshield, no mirrors, because there's a high likelihood that this is gonna hit the ground today. That's how we're rocking. Man, it's so cool when you flip this bike on and you feel the suspension drop down. It, uh, it's honestly really easy to reach the ground on this, even though I'm only five foot ten. You ready? All right, don't be tight on that brake. Make sure your weight's back. Sounds good. So, right now we're doing a braking test, and what I'm gonna do is accelerate up to 25 miles an hour. I've got it in its off-road mode, and this Pan Am has off-road ABS. So I'm not gonna touch the back brake. I'm gonna grab a handful of front brake and just let the ABS do its thing. And I gotta throw my weight back, keep my head up, and the bike should do the rest. Look at that. That's pretty cool. One nice thing about the Pan Am is it is a well-balanced bike. It handles this kind of thing pretty easily, the low speed stuff, which a lot of times is even harder than carrying speed, especially on a bike that weighs almost 600 pounds. All right, well, if there's any spot that I'm gonna drop the bike, it's gonna be right here, so buckle in. If I do drop the bike, it's gonna unplug my mic. Here's the soft sand. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, I didn't drop it. All right. Attempt number two, I'm not going to talk to you guys. Hitting the deep sand. Head up. Oh. Man, that's hard. I'm probably breathing super hard on the mic right now. Okay. Okay, so that time around, I didn't try to steer the bike at all. I didn't try and talk to you guys on the camera. I just let the bike go wherever the hell it wanted to, and it worked. cap off our training day here, we have ended up at this really hey, cool park. Oh, you look wonderful, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and look at that. That is not a bad way to end a day. I'm not too mad about it. Let me show you a couple cool off-road elements on the Pan Am. You can see here a set of laced wheels, and these are set up to be tubeless, which helps off-road. And the guys also said that these are serviceable on the trail, so if you end up hitting it hard enough that you end up bending one of the spokes, then that's something that you could mess with on the go. 
We've also got a monster set of skid plates here. Now, the type of riding that we've been doing, skid plate hasn't been necessary uh, so much as these crash bars. These have been saving this bike a lot, especially if you hop over to this side of the bike, you can see, yeah, it's all scuffed up. This has seen the ground even before I got on it. And then up top, you've got a couple other cool things. These hand guards right here pop off so that they're less likely to break if you fall down. And the guys here said all the testing that they've done, they haven't broken a set yet. Another cool detail is this built-in weak spot on both of the levers. That way, if you do bash this lever into the ground, it'll break off there instead of up here, and you'll still have a usable amount of lever left. We've also got adjustability on these levers. So a lot of adjustability on this bike all around. Even this seat, you can change the position of it without any modification. There's two places for the front of the seat to slot into. So really easy to change the height. And then because this is the Pan America Special, this suspension drops down an inch as you're riding. All right, well, it's day two here at Zakar. My bike and I are doing pretty well, even after we met the ground yesterday. I've named the bike George. He's doing a great job here in the sand, in the soft stuff, over the whoops. But today we're actually doing a big ride, 150 miles. And we're gonna get to see some cool stuff. So let's get to it. All right, we've got our whole group of riders. We're now leaving the Zakar facility where we did all of our training yesterday. We learned a lot of good skills and now we get to put them to use on a really cool 150 mile ride. One nice thing about the Pan Am is it is just as good on the highway, like where we're at right now, as it is on the dirt. It feels surprisingly light and like a dirt bike when you're out there off-roading, and then when you get it here on the highway, it's very stable, very powerful, and comfortable. So we've split off the highway, now we're on a little bit of dirt road. Nothing uh, very technical at the moment, but it is really pretty. And I think this is the kind of thing that ADV bikes are really good for. Uh, they can do a lot more serious terrain than this, although at the end of the day, it isn't a dirt bike, but it's got soft suspension, it's really comfortable and stable, and so this kind of washboard, uncomfortable road. Yeah, I'm glad I'm on this bike and not anything else. I mean, this is round about as comfortable as you're going to be on this kind of terrain and I'm enjoying it. One cool thing about this off-road mode with the off-road traction control is that you can really bury the throttle through a turn and the bike gives you nothing to worry about. The traction control makes sure that you don't slip too much. You can slip just a little bit, but it cuts in pretty quick, keeps you going straight. And then it's the same with the off-road ABS. You can grab a handful of that front brake and it's it's not gonna lock that front end up no matter how much you grab I tried pulling on it hard and uh, yeah it just the bike wants to stay upright so in that off-road mode you really don't have to be a particularly great off-road rider to keep this motorcycle upright and get pretty aggressive with the controls but in the off-road plus mode that's where you get to have a lot of fun and this bike has so much torque on top of all its horsepower that you can keep that back tire spinning all the way up a mountain if you want to, and I do. So right now we've transitioned to a little bit of broken up pavement. So I've got the bike in its road mode. I had it in sport mode on the highway to get that good acceleration. But since this road is a little bit choppier, road will keep the suspension just a little bit looser, more comfortable. And that way if I'm on the throttle going over some bumps, I'm not gonna accidentally hit it 
when I don't intend to. And yeah, in road mode, it's feeling good. Right now the road isn't super choppy. One thing I do like about this bike a lot is that there is pretty much an infinite amount of lean. I mean, more than the tires can lean. This bike's got no problem with scraping pegs. The lean angle maximum is over 40 degrees, which is pretty damn good. So here we are at our final stop. This is a location out here in the mountains. Again, don't know exactly where we are. I'm not too concerned about it because where we are is just gorgeous. And I wanna give you guys some final thoughts on the Pan America. Now with my initial rides of the Pan Am, I was blown away. I mean, it's just so much fun to ride. Tons of power, it's really comfortable ergonomically and in terms of the suspension. But now that I've spent a couple days riding it off-road, I'm even more impressed with what all it can do. The off-road traction control and ABS, super functional. There's a lot that this motorcycle is good at. It feels like equal parts dirt bike, highway cruiser, and canyon carver. It really does all of that pretty well. And this is one of my favorite new motorcycles that's on the market. However, that's not to say it's perfect. There's a number of small things that I don't love, like the windshield operation is not the smoothest. Um, I do like that it's kind of a pistol grip setup. I think it's cool, but not necessarily the easiest. It kind of takes some effort to get into place. Also, when you have the turn signals on, that has a good feel to it, but switching it off, there's no click there. So you have to look at the screen to see that it's actually done something. But really, other than a few nitpicky things like that, my biggest gripe with this motorcycle is that it doesn't really feel like a Harley Davidson. Certainly doesn't sound like one and you don't get that throb in the seat under you that you expect with an American Harley V-Twin. So it's a very, very different kind of bike. Anyways guys, that's all for this video. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. I'm hoping that we're gonna get one of these bikes on some Colorado trails soon and really put its chops to the test. And we'll catch you in the next one.